Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I thought I'd talk to you for a moment about a few words from the great yogi Patanjali, from the aphorisms of Patanjali, uh, with commentary by Christopher Isher Isherwood that I read about last week. Uh, it had to do with the ways to attain liberation. And of course there are many ways to attain liberation. You can do it, for instance, one of my favorite ways to, to practice to become more spiritual is through the yoga of devotion, bhakti yoga. Um, and so I was just at the, um, the Shakti Fest in um, Joshua Tree this last weekend, and that's what the people there were doing with an emphasis on Divine Mother and devotion to Divine Mother and the, and the sacred feminine. And so then later in the year they have um, Bhakti Fest, and that's, that's, a, that's a festival of devotion to God. And that's frequented more by, it has both male and female energies uh, of devotion. A little bit more masculine, I think, than, than Shakti Fest. And um, so that's one thing. You can play kirtan, and that's, that's a way of devotion. You can feel your heart. That's what I've been doing since the year 2000. And um, you, can, you can take the path of, is it called shnana, which means um, there's a, a, um, I'm out in the desert in Joshua Tree and there's a, a raven soaring by on the up, updrafts from the warm airs of uh, evening. Uh, a big uh, confrontation between two ravens ended not too long ago. It was very talkative, very loud, and it ended with a standoff. And now here's a raven just enjoying the beautiful breezes of, of sunset. Pretty cool. So jnana yoga has to do with knowledge, and some people pursue that path. In fact, I'd be inclined to say that the science of theosophy and the writings of Arthur Powell have more to do with jnana, or wisdom, the attainment of wisdom. And some people say, I might be wrong about that, some people say that, um, that this is one of the hardest paths of yoga. But I think for people that are suited to it, it's perfect, really perfect. Not too many people, but those for those people, it's really great. Um, I like jnana yoga also. And so I'm one of those unusual people that, that likes a number of different ways of uh, attempting to attain God consciousness or liberation. Uh, I'm interested in all the paths, actually, almost all. <laughs> but I'm getting to that. And then I think, let's see, they mentioned... Uh, and then there's, let's see, concentration. And concentration is, an, is the art of concentrating. They use it in a particular way. You're concentrating on a particular object, say, and just watching it until you attain oneness with an object. And then uh, another way to do it is uh, then concentrating on nothingness, you know, no object, you know, like that. It's, it's a pretty arcane science that you can learn step by step by reading that book. One of the ways that I like to uh, seek liberation is by chanting God's name. And y years ago I did that all the time. For about 10 years I chanted God's name. Actually I was using a mantra that had to do with abundance. Abundance. And uh, it was the name of God, uh, I think Hindu, uh, one, of the, one of the sacred names of God from India. And it went like this, Hara, Hara, Hara. Hada, 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 hee. You use your navel point energy and it creates for you in the world. It creates something for you. What you want, you know, abundance or love or whatever it is. I'll do it again. So I'm, I'm pushing my navel point in uh, on, the, on each syllable, or most of the syllables. It goes like this. Hada, 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 hee. Hada. Hara, 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 h
that. So I would do that uh, just in my own consciousness. I would like churn the ethers, they say, with that all day long, every time I could think of it. Especially during drive time, if it was local and not on the freeways. And when I was standing in line or whenever I was not doing a work that involved the logical mind. Uh, I like that way too. <laughs> I don't know that that's in uh, Patanjali though. I have to look. So there was a list of of ways to attain the superpowers, the the yogic powers, and and so it, um, the interesting thing was it, it it gave the list and then it gave over a hundred superpowers and then in the fine print you learned that if you attain the superpowers and didn't go on to uh, total devotion to God or to like alignment with God consciousness, then some really gruesome things would happen to you, you know. So I always thought after that, I was glad I read that book very carefully because uh, then I didn't go after those superpowers, you know, which are a bit of a bother. They create more trouble than they're worth, actually. And, and once you get them, you have to figure out how to give them back to God somehow. So, but anyway, let me see. On the list, right? Uh, so the, the theory is that um, that the superpowers, this is the theory that I learned, not from Patanjali, that the superpowers are just something that, like paving stones on the way to liberation or God consciousness, God awareness, awakening, what we're doing now. And so uh, we have to know the warning signs of having the superpowers and then we have to like humbly offer them in service to the divine you know that's the important thing so I think that in India where Patanjali lived there were a lot of people who were interested in developing the superpowers a long time ago long long ago and still today that's the case and so this list of ways of, of doing it is pretty important. The very first thing on the list is drugs. I'm assuming maybe hallucinogenics or what, whatever, I'm not sure what. Uh, but what I've heard about hallucinogenics is that they were used in many ancient cultures to open the doorway to the astral realm, for instance. And when a, a, an initiate was properly prepared with fasting and ritual and so forth, the support of his or her community, then uh, they were fairly successful, I think, uh, as, a, as a way of ushering in, uh, say, rites of passage um, for manhood or for, for womanhood or whatever it should be. Um, in the, in the, but for the spiritual adept, uh, for the person that's training to be a spiritual adept, uh, the use of drugs is, is, in my opinion, not indicated. Sometimes people unknowingly use a drug in their, in their youth or like that and learn first about this kind of spiritual attainment where, where a person becomes one with God or, or mystic. Uh, and then they go on uh, to lifelong study of, of spiritual things. And that's in that case, it's not such a bad thing to have tried something that that led to something really good. Um, my path was was otherwise. When I was born, I was already in. It had a feeling of being a mystic, and by the time I was five, I was very strongly into that understanding that the, that God and the divine are one with me and that the natural world is merely a manifestation of of God's loving care you know so so for me um, what I feel very strongly is that drugs are not the way to to step out there into the into the realm of liberation s s seeking uh, the problem with drugs is that that they offer these um, these superpowers before a person is spiritually de developed enough to to 
to know how to to deal with them okay and so uh, uh, what what will happen then is that mistakes can be made for instance a person may use their superpowers um, out of uh, sensory attraction for instance the desire for money or the desire for lots of women or the desire for lots of men I think those are the main attractions the desire for to accumulate lots of goods and the desire to have lots of um, sexual liaisons I might have missed a few oh uh, the desire for great power a person could use them because they want power over lots of people <laughs> so 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 then what happens is people um, people do the drugs they get the superpowers and then they have these temptations that that lead them into the realm of massive karmic uh, problems and so then it takes lifetimes to get out of that again and the the uh, one good example is the use of um, of drugs to attain superpowers that allow a person to to kill other people and go undetected or like that all right so what happened in ancient India when people there was a group called the thuggies and these in India everyone is respected no matter what their occupation so these were considered great uh, spiritual adepts and they were given the name of guru uh, the the strongest one in, in in our culture we would call them gangsters or brigands or thieves or like you know roaming gangs of thieves that would mercilessly prey upon travelers and and just for the loot that they had and throw them down in wells and all kinds of gruesome things described in Wikipedia <laughs> so um, so but they were treated with respect and and they had attained by whatever means they had attained these superpowers and what happened to them apparently piecing it together when they when they passed on was they would practice to to walk into other uh, physical forms from the astral form of the person they they passed on they into their astral form then they would um, try to seize upon the um, drugged body of a person that was young and healthy and displace the soul and consciousness and awareness there and step into that body it's called walk in and take over that body from that other person steal the body right and the theory is the story goes that this was successful I consider it was probably not successful that is just a story because the um, the astral body of such a person uh, who had spent their whole life murdering and thieving and all that stuff would most likely be what they call a Kama Rupa. Kama Rupa is the body of a depraved being, the body of a depraved human being who has lost the, um, the conscience that characterizes the nobility of humankind. And uh, the, what I've heard from the Theosophical text is that this, this Kama Rupa is like this very tough, like gangster desire elemental that can survive for a very long time on the astral plane. Typically, when we pass on, the the best thing, best and best thing, is for the um, for the desire elemental to sort of detach and go away, and just slowly disintegrate. Actually, here. But in the case of the Kama Rupa, what survives on the astral plane is the animal base animal instincts and the feral passions of what was once a very uh, gnarly human being and the, and in my opinion what what they call walk-ins in the psychic lore are really the walking in of the Kama Rupa of these depraved individuals according to the it's a pretty cool text huh? depraved depraved individuals who have lost their souls basically through their through their actions in the world and and the Kamarupa steps is what steps into and displaces the soul of the walked-in person so uh, 
so w what the followers of such a person might worship uh, as their, because it sounds a lot like their leader who passed on, is really just the worst uh, qualities of the most animal qualities of a person who walked sideways of the law for their entire life and disregarded all the conventions regarding kindness and compassion and uh, and uh, just legal legal niceties such as don't kill <laughs> honor your father and your mother <laughs> all that stuff you know goes by the wayside so so anyway Apparently, by the time they get to the thuggy cult stage, after many, many incarnations, people are pretty much ready to give it, give it up, you know, give up the soul thing altogether. And so, I, I doubt that happens with many people, you know, but it could happen. And it could also happen that they would reincarnate in the normal manner, in a, in a very difficult situation with a lot of, um, a lot of polarity in it, and then attempt to, to resolve that. Um, in a new incarnation. So but what's been happening recently is that these, these um, thuggy cult uh, individuals, as they are ready to come back into incarnation on Earth, are not finding the suitable light quotient uh, for them to be able to come back. And this is because your light quotient is not, is not so bright. You know, and everybody on Earth is brightening up quite a bit. So they're roiling around and turmoiling around and gangster filling around on the astral plane here and there whenever they can. Whenever a person manifests some kind of yearning for a physical experience that's similar to their own inclinations. So it's kind of dangerous right now to go out on the astral plane, especially if you're sensing emotions uh, like hatred or anger or extreme fear because they'll be waiting for you, you know. Even now they're playing about up above the head up there. Um, the eighth to the tenth chakras, they're like zinging about, you know, attempting mischief, attempting to produce people's astral plays and so forth. And just generally causing havoc in the eighth to the tenth dimensions that they can, I don't know how they, how they get an assist up there that high because in my opinion their dimensionality is not that good. maybe it's the superpowers that they've gained that allow them to do that uh, it's a big bother it's what's uh, clearing from the world right now is that energy up through there in the pranic column energy so it's kind of cool too we're the explorers and we're finding out all about all about all this <laughs> So drugs, the thing about drugs is they can give you superpowers, but they can throw you into that category called the thug eat cult category. All right. And then there's karma to pay, payback, right? <sighs> payback, I don't think, uh, maybe if you optimize your timelines, you optimize a spirited team, optimize my timelines for the all through free will, right? Try that. If you feel that you've gone sideways for a little bit and you want to get back straight and, straight and steady on the spiritual path, or if you just took a uh, you know left turn to look at the view and, <laughs> and you want to go on, that might get you there right away. Huh. So there's that. And uh, even if your spiritual path, I feel, is... Uh, is is not about drugs at all, but rather about all this other, these other possibilities like bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, uh, concentration, whatever it is. Uh, if you find yourself tempted along these lines to to put your group or your person or your family first, and you know as it's been done from long ages in the past. The thing to, to also consider is that this is the time of the all. This is the time when we join in harmony and unity with all beings everywhere in the upliftment of this universe. And so what worked in the past, what served in the past, uh, in the near future won't be working and won't be serving. 
So it's just something to think about as we continue on with what we're doing, to think about how things might change and how all beings might benefit. And how there might be plenty for everybody too. Kind of cool. You could do a what if, you know. You know, clearly things are just the way they are, but what if they should change? Then how would it be? And what would I do? What would my family do? Or my group? Or whatever. 